All right, today we got a Lexus in the shop that needs a new blower motor. Let's get to work. This is what we're working on today, a 2010 Lexus RX350. This is the uh, two-wheel drive model. Now the complaint on this vehicle was it wasn't blowing air out of the vent, and the issue is it's a bad blower motor. But uh, the problem is intermittent. Of course, right now it's working again, and so I can't show you it not working. But nevertheless, I will show you how to replace it, and I'll show you how to do a few checks in case yours isn't working. And sorry about the noise, it's like a million degrees out, so I gotta run the cooler. All right, looking at the passenger footwell area, or the right side of the vehicle, our blower motor is gonna live under this cover right here. And in order to get it off, we have four little tabs. One, two, three, and four. And we should be able to just reach up in there, see if I can get a shot of it. We just have to press these tabs forward towards the front of the car. We have to kind of pull it down a little bit while we're pressing those and just work our way along like that. Should be able to press this one in. And same thing with this one. And then there's two little feet that hook in the front there. Then we have this electrical connector right here. We just press this down and pull it out. And now we can get this we can get this little cover out of our way and now we can look up under there and there's our blower motor right there all right now we got to unplug this electrical connector i'm actually using the viewfinder on the camera to do this because i can't see up in there but yeah i feel that there's a tab right here we should be able to just press that in and then pull this out and there we go it's unplugged now we can do some quick checks I pulled up a wiring diagram so we can see what we're working with. Here's our blower motor assembly right there. You can see we have three wires coming in. We have a blue one, white with black, and a white. If we follow this white one up, it's coming from the battery. It's coming from a 50 amp fuse under the hood, coming in battery positive. And then in order to make the, uh, an electrical motor run, we need ground. So there's our ground, the white with black. And if we follow that, it goes down to our ground symbol. So pretty straightforward. And then we have this blue wire over here that goes to our AC amplifier assembly. That's a fancy name for like a control unit. So most manufacturers would probably call that an HVAC control unit, but they call it an AC uh, amplifier assembly, no big deal. But it's controlling the blower motor speed on this wire right here, which is a pulse width modulated um, signal. It's just a high, low signal. So high, low, high, low, like that, like a square wave and then they can vary the distance between those high and low uh, peaks and valleys and the logic in here and the transistor will know okay I, I go faster or I go, I go slower so that's how this system works in a nutshell and you can see this is hot all the time this uh, power and of course ground is um, there all the time so we have power and ground coming to this motor at all times so if this logic in here fails, there's a capability of this to run all the time. Even with the key off and you out of the vehicle, your blower motor could run. Um, so that's the downfall of this type of design where we don't have a relay or anything in between is that it can run constantly. Um, another, another thing is, you know, if the logic in here, in here fails, then the blower motor won't work at all. So, or it'll only work maybe in certain speeds. So that's uh, typically how these can fail. So on this system, our transistor is inside the blower motor assembly. On other systems, the transistor is outside of the blower motor assembly on its own. Um, and so you'll see, you know, somewhere in line, you'll see, you know, blower motor transistor. So there'll be a line going here, and then there'll be a line going to the control unit. Um, in really old systems, we had a transistor, so just coils of wire that controlled the um, fan speed. But typically then, you'd only have four speeds. With these newer modern systems, we can have seven or even up to like 15 different speeds. So there are some benefits to having these electronics on here, but you know, there are downfalls also. So why don't we go over to the car and do some simple checks. We can use a test light and just put a test light in between the white and the white with black and see if we have power. We don't need a key or anything because it's full-time power. So if we put a test light across those two terminals, it should light our test light if we have good power and good ground. Now for test lights, we have a couple different options when, we're, when we go to test this. 
this is a standard test light and it has this type of terminal or terminals on the end for testing so this has a clamp that's great if you're near the battery or somewhere else you can clamp but I want to test right at the terminal so I have modified a test light to do that so it has a point on the other end also and it doesn't matter if this is power or this is ground or vice versa power is going to flow either way on a test light so it doesn't matter um, but what's nice is we can just probe the connector just like that without having to deal with uh, anything like this now the only drawback with this style of test light is it draws this one draws 270 milliamps which is not a lot about a quarter of an amp this is a heavier duty circuit, this blower motor, and so we want to put it under more of a strain in order to really test it. And that's where we have this 4 amp test light, which is just an old headlight bulb. And I have a similar setup where I can just probe right in there, and if we have power and ground, it should light that nice and bright. And that really puts a load on our system, and uh, it's a really good test. So I think we'll use this for the blower motor. Alright, hopefully you get a good view. Here's our white wire so that should be our power here's our white with black on top and that should be our ground and then the tiny little wire in the middle that's going to be our control so the two outside terminals this one and then this one over here are going to be our power and ground so all we need to do is touch inside there to see if it lights our test light now we want to be careful we don't want to spread these terminals so we're not going to jam this in there we're just going to touch on it so we're just going to touch it right there and touch it right there and you see that's nice and bright so that's pulling a lot of current so we know that our power and ground is good just with that simple test now if we did not have um, our test light light then we'd have to break this circuit down and see are we missing power or are we missing ground and then we would have to go to a separate power and a separate ground to do that now if that test light didn't light then we would want to try to isolate it have we lost power or have we lost ground a quick way to do that is we can just connect to a ground right here and then we can just come over to our power wire and just probe it again and you can see and I'm just touching it in there we're not bending anything or spreading the terminals but you can see that's a quick check now we know we have power at least and now it may not be a great power we may have to put it under more of a strain like with a bigger test light but that's a quick test we can see okay we have power and then we would have to try to track down the ground and make sure that's okay we can do the same test but we have to go to a power source typically you'd want to run your uh, test light all the way to the battery um, and get battery power there and then uh, and then check your ground and see if it lights your test light in order to test that control wire we need fancier equipment so I brought the lab scope out so we can see the signal now I'm just back probed into the signal or I, I should say I'm front probed into that terminal and I'm using a special terminal adapter so we're not doing any damage so that's with the, sig um, with the system off. I have the vehicle on, but the blower motor's off. So all I have to do is hit the um, button over there to turn the speed up, and you'll watch what happens to the signal. So there we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And see how that signal gets wider and wider. And that's telling the transistor inside our blower motor how much resistance it needs to place on the circuit and that changes our speed. If I invert this signal and get a better look at it. So now that's still on high. Now we'll go back and turn it all the way to off. So there we go. Back down. Now we're on four, three, two, one, and then there's off. So that's how you would check the signal if uh, you know if you were worried about the controls coming over here but uh, you do need some kind of dedicated equipment in order to see that. Really, you need a lab scope. You need something fast enough to see that signal because that's a pretty darn fast signal. All right, now that we've seen how to test it, let's go ahead and get this thing replaced. All right, in order to get that blower motor out, in addition to unplugging it, we're gonna have to get these three fasteners out. I took a picture of one that looks like a T25, a Torx 25. So let's go in there and get those three out. And looking at our blower motor, looks like we got one right there, one back here, and one over there. We just got to get them out. Not sure how much I can film it. You guys are kind of in my way. All right, I'm going to get this back one first, but in order to do that, I got to use a short, stubby screwdriver, as you can see, and just have that T25 bit attached to it. This little stubby driver is great. 
Yeah, that's what they look like. Just got to get the other two out now. Now, as soon as I already have the stubby in my hand, I'll just take out this other one. Gonna have to hold that blower motor up into place and you take this last one out and then we can just drop it right out. And there it is. Let's go grab the new one. Although I like OEM parts, we're trying to save a little bit of money on this job. So this is what we're gonna put in today. There's your part number from TYC, made in Taiwan. I've had good luck with TYC blower motors and uh, fans, anything electrical like that. Um, I like TYC, so that's what we're gonna go with today. And it's always a good idea, compare the old and the new parts, make sure they're the same. Looks like we're good here. All right, we just gotta get it back up into place. We've gotta make sure this goes the right way. That allows a little bit of air to return, keep our motor cool. And we'll just kinda fish it back up in here. And that looks pretty good. Now we gotta see if we can't get a bolt or a screw started. All right, let's get it plugged in. And we'll go ahead and put our cover back on. Get our little light plugged in. Feels like it's working. I like to replace the cabin air filter in here anytime I do a blower motor. Well, that's it for this one. Pretty simple one. And as always, if the video helped you out, you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.